Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to make a grappling hook like the user Skynet2012 asked for. So the base for a, a, a grappling hook is actually a joint and if you don't know what a joint is, I recommend you watch the tutorials at Unity. I will put the links in the description. Anyways, to add the joint I'm going to add component, physics 2 d and there's a lot of joint, if I put here joint, there's a lot of joints uh, and the 2D joint that I'm going to use today is the distance joint there's also other types of joints that you can use like the spring joint you could use it if you want like a bouncy uh, hook but what we're going to use is the distance joint so that's what we're going to for and let me show you how this works so as you can see the joint has its uh, origin point which is usually steel and uh, the other point where, where where something moves and if I hit play you'll see that because the joint is only that size small the player will snap to that distance so if you change the distance you can change the how much the player is further away from the origin and as you can see if I disable the R player script it will bounce infinitely Oops. It will bounce infinitely because we have no drag, and that's basically it. Uh, one other feature that we're going to use with this joint is this little max distance only. Because right now, if I put here the distance to a big ass distance, the player will always have to be at that distance, no matter what. So, to collide with stuff, all I have to do is to enable collision, and the player will now collide with stuff, as you can see. But as you can see, he gets buried onto the ground, and that's because you have also to check max distance only. And now you will not get buried into the ground, and that max distance is just is just the maximum limit. But our player can be anywhere else; it doesn't have to be at the maximum limit. It just has to, but that's the maximum limit. If he gets uh, more away than that, well, then he gets snapped to it. Anyways, with that joint created. I'm going to make those changes, so this and this, and now I'm going to create here a script called grappling hook script. So, new script grappling hook. Okay, so in this script, and for now, we're going to just create the variable to, to that holds the, the joint, so distance joint to the joint, and that will hold the joint. And right now, that joint. Oops, that joint is nothing, and to make it equal to this component, all you have to do is to make the joint be equal to get component distance joint, like so. And now the joint is equal to this component that is also in the player, just like we wanted. And um, the way that we're going to make this grappling hook is we want to set the position where we want a joint to go with the mouse so wherever I am pointing to will be the direction of it and then we want to send a ray cast in that direction to see if it hits something and if it does hit something well then it will be a grappling hook anyways to make the mouse position mean something I'm going to first create here a vector free variable called target pause and here in the update function, I'm going to make here if, and we're going to put an input key so that when we press that key, the grappling hook gets thrown. So input dot get key down, and I'm going to use the key E get key down key code dot E to use the key code the key E, and to use that. Mouse thing, what we're going to do here is make the target position, which is a vector free, be equal, and now we're going to use this function that basically gets the position of the mouse and translates it from screen position to world position. And to do that, we have to put here camera dot main, and this part here accesses the main camera, and that camera is basically the one that has the tag main camera, and this is the only camera that has that tag, so that will be the main camera. And we want to set screen to world points. And now all we have to put here is a screen a vector free position. And what we want to tell to transform? Well, we want to transform the mouse position 
So what I'm going to put here is input dot mouse position like so. And that's basically it. One other thing that we want to do is to make the the mouse position Z be zero because right now it is not zero, it's some other thing. So just put here target z position dot z equals zero, so it is zero. And now with that done, like I said, we're going to throw a ray cast in a certain direction to see if there's something there. And by the way, let me show you this. The way that distance joints work is that they can either be connected to nothing here or to a rigid by 2D. So the way that I'm going to do this is whenever a ray cast collides with something that has a collider a rigid by 2D, then we could attach it. In theory, even if it collided with something that has that didn't have a, a rigid by 2D, we could also attach it as long as we didn't feel the, this part over here. But that's just the way that I'm going to do it. Uh, you can do it any other ways, like always. Anyways, let's get started. So I'm going to make here a raycast hit to the variable. So as you can see in the raycast called hit. So here I'm going to make hit equal to physics to d dot raycast. And if you don't know much about raycasts, I recommend you check it. And what's the default position? Well, it's transform dot position. And what's the default? And what's the direction? Well, we want to make a vector that goes from the default position to the to the mouse position, so to the target position. So a vector that goes from this into here. If you want the vector to go from A to B, you just have to put here B minus A. So target position, which is B minus transform dot position, just like that. And we are going to also create a variable to make to to put here the max distance, which is basically the max distance that the grappling hook can have. If it is more than that distance, we basically can't instantiate, can't make the hook go. So I'm just creating I'm just going to create here a variable public float distance and I'm going to make it by default 10 float, something a little bit big, and put here distance. And I'm going to also put here a mask. But for now the mask will be will have everything. I'm just so I'm just going to put here mask because I have a matter of names. And here make a public layer mask mask like so. And this mask has whatever the raycast can collide with. With that done, we have sent we now have sent a raycast and we now we want to check if we have actually hit something. So to to check if we hit something, we have just to check if this hit, which is a raycast hit 2D, has a collider. Because if it doesn't have a collider, it means it's empty. So we're going to do something just like this. So if hit.collider not null, it means that it has something. And like I said before, we only want stuff that has a rigid body 2D components. Again, like I said, we can make it we can make it even go whenever it doesn't but so I'm just going to put here and hit dot collider dot game objects so what this is the whatever the recast collider with dot get component and it has to have the component rigid by 2d so it just checks if the rigid by 2d component isn't null because if it isn't null it means that it has that component so and that we can hold on to it okay with this done over here, I'm going to. What I want to do is to make this joint active because right now it should be inactive, but actually here it isn't. So I'm just going to put here joint dot enabled equals false so that it isn't inactive. And then whenever we hit something, I make here joint dot enabled equals true. And that's not the only thing that we have to do. We also have to change some st some other some other stuff in the joint, and let's see what what we have to change. Well, we have to change the connected rigid body to be to whatever we collided with, and we have to change the connected and we have to change the connected anchors because this should be usually zero zero. So let me show you if I put this here and make this uh, rigid body to D. And in here in the in the distance joint, if I go to put here 
if I drag that little dirty tool here, you'll see that the because the connected anchor has these coordinates, the the distance will be all the way there. So usually it will be near zero. So for now I'm just going to put zero zero, but uh, later we're going to change it because we don't want it to always be in the center of whatever it collided to. Imagine that whatever we it collided to was like this, then the joint wouldn't be shouldn't be like this. Should for instance if we collided with this zone over here, the joint should be here and not here. But for now it will go there. It will go into the center. So I'm just going to leave it at zero zero, and we'll change that later. And like I said, oh, and this is in the wrong place. Like I said, let's make whatever it collided with it make be the the connected body. So just make here connected body equals whatever it collided with. So collider hit dot collider dot game object, and like I said, it requires a the bridge by 2D, so I'm going to put here get component rigid by 2D and we'll get the rigid by 2D of whatever it collided with. And the other thing that I want to change is the, the distance, the distance between this, the player, and whatever it collided with. Because if I like if I if the distance is always like this, then the player would have to be there. But if we are on the ground and we hit something over there, I want the distance of the rope to be exactly the distance from the player to whatever it collided with. So to make that, I'm going to change this distance, making it equal to something. So joint dot distance equal to, and we're going to make it equal to a distance. So, and to calculate the distance between two points, all you have to do is to put vector to dot distance and this will calculate the uh, distance between two points in space and what are those points? well one of them is the transform dot position of the player so just going to put your transform dot position and the, la and the latter is the point where it collided and to get the point where it collided is you have to just go to the hit dot point this is the point where the raycast collided with something now this is done uh, I'm going to also put here uh, another if clause to whenever we stop pressing the button because the way that we're going to do this is when we press the button it, the, the the rope appears when we stop press the button the button the rope disappears so I'm just going to put here input dot get button get key down uh, key up I mean key code dot e and whenever that happens, all I want to do is to make the joint not enabled to be equal to false. And for now that's good. Let's see how that's working. So right now you don't see whoops. I'm going to make this rigid body thing be kinematic so that it doesn't fall in our face. And right now as you can see the joint is disabled and I'm going to point the mouse in this direction over here and press E oh and nothing has happened and that's because of a simple thing which is I forgot to make the mask be everything the mask except the player and this is whatever the raycast can collide with so again let's try this again nothing is being the distance joint is disabled and right now I'm going to jump press E but uh, click on the E button and right now I'm attached to that block as you can see and that's basically what uh, a regrouping hook is anyways because the tutorial is getting a, a bit big I'm going to end it right now but I, we have not ended in the next tutorial what I'm going to do is to make something visible here and I'm going to actually also put make the the rope get smaller and smaller with time and I'm going to make this point itself being in the in the origin of whatever you collided with will be on the surface Anyways, thank you for watching this tutorial and see you in the next one.